Hi there, my name's Thais and welcome to my channel. <laughs> it's been a while since I've posted, honestly. I've intended to post various videos and at some point or another that just got ruined for whatever reason. Like there's plenty of reasons. I was thinking about, you know, some things that I've learned like so far in college. I'm a sophomore going into my second semester. It really feels like I've only had one semester in college because of quarantine. My first whole year was online, so I didn't have the college experience honestly except for this semester and this year and there are a lot of things that i've kind of you know through conversations with people and just experience i feel like they're really important and i wish i was told beforehand and they're super natural things to just learn throughout college as well but i wanted to share with you guys some of the things that i've learned the biggest thing i think on this list is to just be present and that's like a tough, tough thing for honestly anybody, especially for college students, I think. But college is the only experience that's going to be like this. <laughs> you're in that phase where you're an adult, but you're not like an adult adult yet. I was talking to a friend of mine a bit ago and he was kind of talking to me about how he was feeling if you're constantly in this mentality where you want more, even when you're in the place you envision yourself to be, you probably won't be happy. Because it's all about your mentality of wanting more. And I think at the end of the day, the ability to be satisfied and content and happy is entirely within us. Like, yes, yeah, some things here and there are dependent on, you know, our environment and people around us and our circumstances. But for the most part, I think we can always find something that we enjoy we can always find comfort and stability in something somewhere a routine this friend of mine that i was talking about you know how he wanted a community and he wanted to hang out with people and like all these things and i was thinking about it and i was like from my objective perspective i was like you can have all those things you don't want to end up in a situation where you're just having the time pass and you're kind of like suffering through it or you're just like Oh, I can't wait till this is over, especially college. Like you don't want to be in that place mentally. You don't want to have that experience. You can definitely make the most out of what you have. Point being, being able to enjoy your present moment and make the most out of it and get the closest to what you want with what you have is entirely a mindset. And that mindset's, I think, the biggest predictor of how happy you'll be. It's not about actually having, you know, this and this and this or, these circumstances like it's literally all about how you look at it what you do about it <laughs> <laughs> learning about yourself don't be stagnant with your own growth and discovery there's always more to learn about yourself and understand about yourself especially in college because college is a lot of firsts in life experiences and the types of people you meet all these things honestly just explore yourself discover more about yourself it's freaking fun it's just another part of self-growth self-discovery and actually self-love as well because a big part of self-love is accepting yourself for who you are while wanting to grow and how are you supposed to accept yourself for who you are if you don't know who you are also just don't put yourself down for mistakes we all make them we can't expect ourselves to be perfect especially in situations we haven't faced before so just be understanding of that within yourself and within others as well but still hold people accountable if they do some shitty stuff <laughs> join clubs and sports it's the easiest way to find a community and make friends and most of the time i think if you join a club or sport of something you actually are into you're definitely going to meet cool and like-minded people that should be in your circle like if i hadn't joined the fencing club I wouldn't really have met anybody other than my roommate and my fencing club has a lot of really freaking cool people in it so I would have been missing out and I honestly should join some more clubs as well when I get the time to do it but join at least a club. Usually clubs and sports have a ton of social events, a lot of fun stuff you can do. Make good friends. Surround yourself by people you want to be around surround yourself by people that inspire you and make you feel better and are there for you boundaries and communication um and you can come from various sides of the spectrum here um me personally i come from a side where i have never really 
known what my boundaries are because I was never fully allowed to embrace or have them by people in my life in the past. For me, setting boundaries is a form of self-respect that can apply to many people, but I can think of situations where, you know, I didn't even want to set boundaries because I was okay with what was going on, but I should have. The other person doesn't have to have malicious intentions for them to cross your boundaries or cross the boundaries that you should be making. And I can be very passive and there's just many times I could think back to, I wish I set boundaries even if I didn't want to set them back then. Communication is, I feel like, People hear it a lot, but they don't actually understand or know what it's like to do it well. Communication is made up of two very important factors. First one is being able to genuinely listen to the person. And that means putting yourself in their shoes. That means trying to see it from their perspective with the information they had, stuff like that. So you actually can see where they're coming from. Because I think oftentimes when you do that, it just brings so much clarity and understanding a lack of aggression as well and then the other part of communication is being able to clearly state what's going on in your head because maybe somebody isn't being honest about their feelings or they just don't know how much to say you can have a person tell you their side of the story and you'd be like oh yeah i totally see what you mean and not actually see what they mean because you're not genuinely trying to understand you're just trying to validate them validate them and then get into your side of the story. And I have only recently realized what it feels like to actually put myself in their shoes, even though I thought I was. So check yourself because it's hard, dude. It's freaking hard. Also, that kind of goes into just, you know, avoid secrets, avoid drama. Don't talk shit about people behind their back. Um, just don't get in the habit of those things. Romanticize your life especially your alone time when you have it because for for me at least it's so hard to be alone for a really long period of time i'm kind of an ambivert i would say and whether or not i'm more extroverted or introverted really depends on various aspects of my life in the present so there have been times where i've been fine being alone but more recently especially after quarantine being alone for me is isn't really enjoyable for me, I recover way better around specific people and usually only one or two people at a time because I like really small groups and circles and stuff, personal time with people. Romanticize the time you have alone, do stuff you enjoy, um, do the stuff that you feel like you haven't had time for, you know, go to that cafe. That's what I do. I go to a cafe, I listen to a podcast about whatever I want to, it's been mostly health and wellness related for me recently um you know take notes journal sketch people get yourself a coffee or a tea treat yourself it's nice being alone and it's nice not to stress about um accommodating anybody but yourself as well so honestly just romanticize everything <laughs> if you want to if that makes you feel better it definitely makes me feel better when i'm feeling down or you know kind of lonely stuff like that Finding peace with change. This one, this one's hard for me. This one's so hard for me because ever since I've moved up, honestly for a while it's been like this, but ever since I left home and went upstate, um, stability has been something very lacking. And because I've kind of, you know, for various reasons, there is no stability in sight for me right now. I don't really have a comfortable place to go back to. I don't have a super duper consistent friend group because of like recent issues. I just feel like there's been a general lack of stability in my life and it messes with me a lot and I'm sure this is a very common experience for a lot of people, especially with the transition of in-person schooling, stuff like that. So transitionary periods can be really tough and I think that a big part of it is just finding peace with all this constant change, you know. If some of your older friends might graduate, you might lose some friends and you might live in different places every year and you're not going to have the same classes at the same time so your routine will inevitably change. Just all these things are going to keep changing and that's just a natural part of college. But I think that it's something you should embrace. It's the only consistent thing and it kind of just goes back to that whole being in the present thing. Make the best of what you can and find stability in the little places that you can, the things within yourself. Don't neglect self-care, another hard one for college students, um, but 
there's a, there's a lot of times throughout the semesters, throughout life, where you get really overwhelmed and stressed for college students. It's usually centered around exams and classes and sometimes social issues and social problems. And self-care is honestly the one thing that you should still be doing. It's definitely hard to keep up with self-care when you need it the very most, like when you're stressed out. But it's also one of those things that will keep you grounded. And it could be something that you find stability in. Whether that's like meditating or eating mindfully or just brushing your teeth or taking a shower or washing your face. Like it doesn't have to be anything crazy. It's totally up to you. Don't compare your self-care to others and what you need for recovery to others. Because everyone's different. Everyone has different needs. Um, but even the little tiny things, super nice, super important. And it'll help you kind of get back on your feet, I think. Get to know campus get to know um, your living area. So if you live on campus, then that's, I guess, campus. I live off campus. So getting to know my, um, that neighborhood that I live in, super important, as well as any frequented neighborhoods that like by college students. Um, for me, my living area is the frequented neighborhood. So it's kind of a double, but get to know those places. It's gonna help you so much. Campus is gonna help you a lot with just getting around, finding shortcuts to get to your classes so you're not late, you know, knowing where to hang out, knowing the good spots, having fun, having that freedom, getting to know those frequented neighborhoods, super important as well for the same reasons. You know, if I didn't know my neighborhood well enough, I wouldn't know that cafe was there and I wouldn't have been able to find that, you know, little safe haven for myself. Take classes you actually care about. So for me, I'm a psych major and a health and wellness studies minor. I personally have no freaking clue what career I'm gonna go into regarding those things. Like I, I know what careers I could go into. I don't necessarily feel drawn to them though. So the reasons I'm taking like all these classes is because I just care about them. It's so helpful to know these things for myself, especially as someone who does a sport and I really wanna get into that and do it competitively. It's so important to know things like exercise science, psychology of sport and exercise. Like you obviously don't have to take it, you know, to the level I have where it's literally my major and minor. Um, but taking classes, even just like some classes or maybe a minor and something you just are genuinely interested in super important because at the end of the day this is your life this is your college career i guess this one's a little bit more specific this is more for if you are an athlete you have a sport that you do prioritize recovery if you take it really seriously and i'll push myself really far and if i don't properly recover it's going to knock me out for a few weeks honestly I think you should try to look into your specific sport, what you should be doing before and after. And then a lot of the other things are pretty neutral in terms of taking care of yourself and recovery. So um, just do look into that. This is why I'm saying um, health and wellness classes are really great. I don't really want to get into like really generic ones like be yourself. I think those are self-explanatory, but um, do be yourself. <laughs> yeah, these are just things that I figured out over the course of the semester. So. There's probably a ton of stuff that I am, I don't know yet. And that's totally normal, totally fine. I just wanted to share these things because I just wrote these out for myself. And I think if I go into the next few years of college, keeping some of these things in mind, it's definitely going to help me out a lot. Even if it's with just myself, because this channel is honestly for myself at this point. And I like that. Thanks for watching if you stuck through to the end. I really appreciate that, honestly, and I hope that you could take something from this. Uh, thanks for watching, and like this video if you enjoyed and learned something from this to let me know. Bye!